Hey everyone, how's it going? It is mid-September 2020 at the moment, and Microsoft have just released an update to their secret management PowerShell module, and this is now version 3, and this was pretty exciting, so I wanted to spend a few minutes with you just to go through this new release that's just come out in this last week. So I had a look at this back in version 2, and it's changed quite a bit now in version 3. So the idea behind the secrets management framework or the module, if you like, is to provide a set of commands that we'll see in a moment, like get secret, set secret, remove secret, so on and so forth. And the idea is that you can use these standardized commands to store and manage credentials or API keys, passwords, so on and so forth. So historically, we've had commands in the PowerShell security module that allowed us to work with credentials and we could store them off on, on the file system, you know, as encrypted XML files or encrypted text files. And we could pull those in at runtime to then bring in the item that we'd encrypted, whether that be an API key or a password. The other component that you'll need to work with the secret management framework is a vault, essentially somewhere to store the credentials or whatever it is that you're trying to store. So Microsoft have built a extensible framework, which is just another PowerShell module or a set of PowerShell modules that hopefully people will write over time. And the idea is that you can write a PowerShell module that interacts with a vault. So that might be something like Azure Key Vault or HashiCorp Vault or even something like one password. And I did actually see one out there in the community that's been written already for LastPass. These modules can be written uh, for the vault side of things. And then you use the secret management modules to connect into those vaults. And you use those standardized commands of, you know, get, sorry, of get secret, set secret. And in the back end, you don't need to worry about how the nuances go with integrating with that vault because that's all being taken care of for you by that vault integration module, if you like. So Microsoft have also released a local vault, which is called Secret Store, and that uses the .NET cryptographic APIs. And because it's built on .NET, it actually will work across platforms as well. So you can run this on Windows, Linux, or Mac, which is pretty cool. The secret store that Microsoft have provided is a great way to get started with the secrets management. And that's what I'll be using in this video. So we've got the secrets management module, which is where our commands are that we'll be using to get and set secrets. And then we've got the extension module as well, which is for the vault. And that is going to be the local secret store that I'll show you today. But do be aware, like I said, that there will be other modules out there to integrate with other popular vaults as well. So the great thing here is that you could have multiple vaults configured. You know, you might have some things that are using HashiCorp vault, some things that are in Azure Key vault, and some things that are local in the secure vault. But you can use the same set of commands and just change the dash vault parameter on those commands that we'll see to change which vault you're interacting with. So it's pretty cool. Let's jump in and take a look. Okay, so first up quickly, I just wanted to show you the GitHub pages of where these projects are. So we're in the PowerShell repo here for secret management. And this is where you can find everything to do with the secret management module that we're going to take a look at. Now, this readme is still a little bit out of date, but these are the commands uh, here, such as set secret, get secret, so on and so forth that we'll be using in a moment. Now, this second tab that I've got open here is for that secret store that I briefly spoke about. So this is the secret store module that is the extension vault for the PowerShell secret management module. So if you just install secret management, you won't get very far. You're going to need a vault as well. And this is the one that we're going to use for this. Now, if I just jump back to the secret management uh, repo here for a moment and go back to the top, under extension modules here, they do actually have a couple of examples. So there is a module here for Azure Key Vault and also one for the credential manager on Windows as well. So if you feel like it, I'd suggest you come in here and have a look at these. If you've got an Azure subscription and Azure Key Vault, you can download this and try it out with Azure. So let's jump into PowerShell and start getting hands on. So over here, I've got PowerShell 7 installed and that's pretty much all that I've done. Now, the first thing that we need to do is install the secret management module. I'm done with install module microsoft.powershell.secretmanagement and we need to allow pre-release here with this parameter because it still is in preview. So I'll kick that off and I think this is going to ask me if I'm going to trust the gallery because this is the first time I'm grabbing something. Yep, there we go. So I'll just say yes to that to allow that to install the module. 
Okay, that's installed. Let's go ahead and have a look at the commands that are in that module by using the get command commandlet. And we can see here we've got some stuff such as get secret, we've got remove secret, set secret, and we've also got some commands here to manipulate the vaults. And one of those here of interest is this one in the middle, register secret vault. So one of the things we're going to have to do in a moment is register a vault. Now, for example, if I tried to run get secret here, and for the name, I'll just put nothing because I haven't actually got anything. We'll get it. Uh, we'll get an error here that the secret nothing was not found. And for example, if I tried to do a get secret vault, it's going to return nothing at all. So this module without a vault plugin or a vault extension is pretty useless to be honest. So let's go ahead and grab the secret store. Uh, module. So that's done by install module microsoft.powershell.secretstore. And again, we need the allow pre-release there. So I'll kick that off. And that's going to ask me again for the repository trust. So I'll say yes to that. And that's installed. So let's take a quick look at the commands inside of the secret store module. So these are ones that will be consistent across different vault extensions. So you can see here again, we've got commands to get the secret store config, we can set it, we could do a reset an unlock and an update. And I'll show you a couple of those as we move forward here. So let's go ahead and I'll clear the screen and let's do a registration. So I'm going to run register dash secret vault. So I'm giving it a name here just of my vault. That is just a label. You can call it whatever you like. And then for the module name, that's where we need to specify that extension module for the vault that we're registering. So this one is the Microsoft Secret Store that I just downloaded and installed. So if that was something else like uh, Azure Key Vault or LastPass or 1Password or whatever other vault, that's where you'd specify that relevant module name for that particular vault. And there is another property here or another parameter rather uh, for default vault. So I'm gonna set this to my default as well, which means I don't need to specify the dash vault parameter on most of the commands that we'll be running. So let's give that a go. And then let's do a get secret vault and I'll pipe that across to FL. So we can see that the vault name is my vault and we've got the module name and the module path that, that is going to be leveraging there to actually access the vault. So let's clear the screen there. And what I want to do now is create a new password and store it in the vault. So to do that, I'm going to run set secret. And I'm going to give this one a name of function key. And you'll see why in a moment. And although I don't have to, I can specify the vault of being my vault. So let's press enter there. And we get asked for the secure string of the secret itself. And I'm putting in a value here, which is a function key. And you'll see that in plain text in a moment. But I'm gonna press enter. And now what we get here is that it's telling us that the vault, my vault, requires a password. So by default, that Microsoft Secret Store requires you to enter a password to access it. And you'll need to keep entering that password to access it if you close the session, which is something that we'll look at in a moment, or if it times out with the default value, which is something else that we'll take a look at. So I'm just gonna drop a password in here and there we go. So if I now run get secret info, we'll see that there is a secret in there named function key and it's a secure string and it's in the vault named my vault. From here, I could do a get secret and specify the name of function key and we get told again that it's a secure string. Now there is a parameter here and sometimes you'll need to use this, which I will in a minute, uh, to bring that back as plain text. And there we go, that is the actual key that I entered a few minutes ago for the secret. So what this actually is, is a key to an Azure function app. And I've got a function here, it's, it's nothing too fancy, it's just a HTTP one, just to show a basic example. And what I'd like to do is, first of all, use invoke rest method, and I'm going to do a get on the URI for my function app. And I'm not going to specify any of the keys. And when I run that, we get a response here that it's not successful because uh, it's a 401 unauthorized. So I've configured my function app up in Azure to require that we go and specify the API key or the function key rather with the call. So I'm gonna show you here now how to do that. And one of the things that we can do 
is use invoke rest method again, but see here towards the end, I've now appended a question mark and code in the string. And then within the dollar sign brackets there, I'm actually doing a get secret uh, with the name function key in my vault and getting it as plain text, which is just what we did a few moments ago when it printed out the key onto screen. And if I press enter now to invoke that, what that's actually going to do is grab that value out of the vault in real time and pass it through. So we can see there, my message that I got back is that I've triggered the function using the function key from the PowerShell secret management module. Obviously I went and wrote that <laughs> to make myself feel good. So in a nutshell, that is really the secrets management. You know, we've registered a vault here, we've created a secret, I've showed you how to get it in a couple of different ways, and then we've used it in a real world scenario to go and pull that out in real time at runtime to pass the value through. So I no longer now need to try and store that function key, you know, as an encrypted file on the file system or in some other way. Uh, I can securely save it in the secret vault and pull that in at runtime. So let me clear the screen there and let's run a couple of commands to look at the secret store itself. So if I run a get secret store configuration, That'll show us the current config of the secret store that we've been using here. So we can see there that the password required is set to true and we've got a password timeout of 900, which is seconds, so that's 15 minutes. And we've also got a property there of do not prompt, which is currently set to false. So if I left this session here for 20 minutes and I tried to run get secret again, I'm going to be asked to enter in the password. So for example, we can use set secret store configuration to go and set the password timeout to say we say we want an extra minute i can set that to 960 and yes i'm sure and we can see there that that value has now been updated to 960. additionally there's a command here uh, for update secret store password and if i check the parameters on that i don't think it's got anything so let's just run that by itself so i need to enter the old password and I can enter the new password and enter it again. So this is the password for the vault itself. So there we go. Now, just to show you what happens here, if I close this PowerShell session and let me just open up a new one. So now that we're in a new session here, if I was to do a get secret and specify the name of function key to try and get that secret that we stored, I'm going to get told that the vault named my vault requires a password to access it and I need to enter a password in. So I can do that and enter the password that we just set and then I'll get the value back. Now, if I'm to run that again, it's going to work because I'm now within that timeout that we just looked at. And again, I can go ahead and grab that as plain text to pull it back through. And finally, the last thing that I wanted to show here is that you can run remove, whoops, remove secret and specify the name. So again, we'll do function key and I need to supply the vault for this one, which is interesting. So that is my vault. And now if I was to do a get secret info, then we have no secrets at all. And if I was to try and get the secret of function key, then that's going to fail because it's no longer found in the vault as you'd expect. Actually, there was one more thing that I wanted to bring up here, which is a command for unlock dash secret store. And where this is used is if you, if you have a password that on your vault that you need to access then, and you wanted to use it in an automation way, you know, unattended. And if you did that by default, it's going to sit there and ask you to enter a password, which obviously you can't do if you're trying to automate it or run it unattended. So something you can do is use this unlock secret store command and it's got a password parameter. So in there, I could specify the password for my vault, which was a very secure uh, string like that. And it's not going to do anything here, but what that can do is actually unlock the secret store. So now if I was to go and do a get secret info, it's going to work and it's not going to ask me for the password. So at the start of my script, if I was storing something in the secret store and I wanted to access that, the first thing I could do in my script is this unlock secret store command. Now it does mean that you do need to now store the password for the secret store 
uh, in a mechanism such as on a file, you know, an encrypted XML file or something like that. Or you could alternatively set the configuration of the store to not require a password, but obviously that can have some security implications because you're not protecting your vault with a password. And that's all I wanted to show you for now. So that's an introduction to the secret management framework or the, sorry, the secret management PowerShell module that Microsoft have been working on. Uh, I think it's really cool. And although it's not GA yet, this preview does look to be the one that's getting most towards GA. And I really like the um, framework that they've built around the vaults now and how that's a pluggable framework. So the secret store is a great one to get started with as we've done here but definitely go ahead and check out some of the other ones. And I'll leave some links below uh, in this video to get to those GitHub pages. And I'll also link off to the one at LastPass that I saw um, that had been written as well. If you wanted to check that out, please obviously feel free to do so. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think and I'll catch you again soon.